just as the title of the episode says. WWE, Monday Night Raw, whatever, is watchable again. And Kenny Omega is back. He's back, baby. As the title of probably uh, every wrestling podcast that's going to come out this <laughs> week is literally just going to be Kenny Omega is back. Um, and you know who else is back, though? The Mustache Bros. The Mustache Bros are back. That's who's back. We're back for episode 10 of the podcast. Before we get into it, let's hear that sweet, 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 sweet tune. DJ Bryant, can you hit us with it? One, two. Is this one? Is this one? All right, play it again, play it again, play it again. I know this one. You have to shut up because I got to listen. He was like calling him by his first name. Dave, please stop me. Because I'm supposed to be my friend. It's got to be on here somewhere. Three, two, one. Keep leading. Damn it. Boop. <laughs> Always love to hear it. Always love to hear it. Welcome to episode 10. I got it right this time. Because last episode, I think I was like episode 13. I was like episode 9. There was some confusion there. Yeah. yeah. It's on me. But That's all right. It happens. Episode 10. We made it double digits. They didn't think we'd make it double digits. Double and of digits. course. And of course, we're here. To people watching on YouTube, you know what we're doing. People on the podcast, we just did the... The Mustache Bro signature handshake, too sweet, you know what we're doing. Yeah, we don't really have a name for that. Yeah, well, it's the Mustache Bros thing. For listeners, uh, viewers at home, we're just doing a simple one camera setup today. For audio listeners, you probably don't give a shit. (laughs) Um, It's simple. We got a busy week. Dante is going away next week. Yes, sir. Video output is not going to change. The only thing that's going to change is we we filmed a bunch of stuff for backup. The only thing that's going to change is no podcast episode next week. Sorry, guys. But... Never fear. Everything else is going to be fine. But Dante, to start off, how are you? John, it's Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. This is coming on Friday, but it's Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. I'm doing good. I'm going uh, on a family trip to Texas in a few days. I'm going to be gone for a full week. It's going to be my very first, like, actual vacation Mm. since working. Uh, Honestly, like... Very first vacation since working, period. Like, I can't yeah. even tell you the last time I went on, like, a week-long vacation. So I am uh, I am so looking forward to yeah. just, like, you deserve not it. having to do a single damn <laughs> thing. Like, I'm turning my phone off. Well, not turning my phone off. Turning it off for I'm a week. Turning, everything's <laughs> going away. No, like, I'm excited to just, like, be able to just relax, spend time with my family, and just mm-hmm. worry about that. Nothing else. You <laughs> worry about I got to worry about spending time with my family. Oh, my God. It's such a pain <laughs> in the ass. Um, but, John, you, how are you doing? First of all, you deserve it. Oh, thank take you. as much time thank as you, you need. Thank you. I mean, um, it'll take two weeks. <laughs> I won't come back. Yeah, I'm in charge of that. It'll take as much time <laughs> as you need. Um, I'm good. Nothing nothing crazy. Uh, some cra- Well, nothing crazy personally, but crazy week of wrestling. Oh, my God. You know? It could have been one of the craziest weeks in wrestling. Arguably. Uh, on, I, I said that as a joke, but I'm thinking about it. It, it really could have been. Yeah. So, really, I think we can just start off here with the first thing. We're going to talk about, I mean, Dynamite. Was one of the best dynamites. We'll talk we'll about say it later. Pl- we'll, we'll save, save it. plenty of time for we'll dynamite later. I think the biggest takeaway, and we have like, we're not going to touch on like two or three weeks ago. Like uh, things are old news, whatever. But right. in the general scope of the past couple of weeks, mm-hmm. WWE, more specifically Monday Night Raw, is watchable again. Thank you, Triple H. It's not perfect. No, there's still a lot. Of, you know, yeah, skip it's, over it's not, stuff. It's not and, a night and day thing. Doesn't mm-hmm. like you know. He doesn't change everything in one night. It definitely is going to take time. But you can a thousand percent see the difference. Oh my god! It is yeah. so clear. It's just well, well, we have our topics of things from Monday Night Raw and stuff like that. But it's like things that were not interesting before. Yep. You're suddenly roped into it. And like yeah. for me, the example is like Judgment Day because I have been on this podcast i very much said how stupid it was Mm -hmm. after the whole edge leaving thing no direction just kind of pointless basic like nothing important with there was no reason to care about it now they're opening shows they're in a feud with the mysterios it actually seems like damien damien challenge ray next week i think uh, he's challenging edge so challenging edge finn and ray have their feud and then edge and damien have their feud and then dominic and Rhea, i guess have their Yeah, yeah so like there's a lot of things going on but it's actually interesting. Like they're giving you mm-hmm. something to look forward to, I guess, which is something that Vince wasn't giving us mm-hmm. a few weeks ago. I think my biggest thing, also from this week, that was really like, uh, it was basically them saying the tides have changed. This is new without saying it mm-hmm. in the Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens mm-hmm. promo, which the was promo. fucking so good. So good. It, it's you can tell like. He, and even with like the commentary, they're off the leash. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's scripts and beats, but it seems like very much so they're just like, do what you guys do best. Right, right. Why am I going to sit here and tell you how to do mm-hmm. your job? That was you guys do the promo. So Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens had a phenomenal promo, and Drew McIntyre said this. 
it's getting heated between him and Kevin Owens. He says, we're wrestlers in a wrestling ring. Let's wrestle. I love that. Line. And I think to me, that was the, that was basically Triple H saying things are changing. Yeah. We're, we're a wrestling company. That again. word, like wrestling wrestler, has not been used in WWE in a yeah. very long time. The only person, actually, Cody Rhodes, when he came in, he was mm-hmm. kind of using, because those were banned words. There was right. a whole list of words that were not allowed to say, and wrestling, wrestler, all that stuff were on there. Even like saying like belt, you can't say yeah, the word belt, belt. like because yeah. it's like title or championship, whatever. It's like Triple H is like fuck that. Like yeah. we are, this is wrestling. It's professional wrestling. Like that's mm-hmm. exactly what it is. And also, you're talking about guys kind of being off a leash and stuff like that. I mean, these are guys too that were under Triple H's um, wing in NXT. Like yeah. these are guys that he trusts. Yeah. Like not saying he doesn't trust other people as well, but like you can tell he's taking care of the guys that he helped build up in NXT. I loved the line where. I forget what it was, but Kevin Owens basically called him like, ah, oh, you've been, you said, like, Drew, you've been handed everything, blah, blah. And Drew was just like, like went off. He was like, I've been handed everything. I got fired at, mm-hmm. you know, this years ago mm-hmm. and I left to, get to the Indies and I built myself up and then WWE wanted me. Yeah. Okay. And I, you know, it yeah. came back, whatever. And and I it. like Kevin Owens too because I don't know if this is like a little seed plan or something like that, but Kevin Owens was like, you come out here, you, you try to act like a good guy and stuff like yeah. that. You try to cater to them and all of that. I thought you were looking at my mic. Like no, no, no. Wrong. I was like, is this on? Uh, is this on? Um, oh, yeah. Sorry. Not to cut you off. No, you're <laughs> uh, We have like one small left. Please, for the love of God, buy it so we can get sold So out. we can officially we, say that we, we sold have, out. We have like one left. I don't care if I can't say it. We have one small left. Just That's it. It's it. on the site. I can say it. It's, Just grab it. But anyway, sorry. Uh, no, on. no, no. You're good. Um, but... Yeah, I like the little that little thing right there because it's just like you're you're not a good guy like you're this big tough yeah. guy like stop like you come in with your fake angry voice and stuff like yeah. that like just the whole promo like it was just it was perfect like Kevin Owens off of a leash is I was just amazing. gonna say he's the prime example the number one example that I think of right now that's like is gonna benefit the most from he, this he is not just because to. he's Triple H's guy mm-hmm. not just because it's a thing where like Triple H is gonna because I don't even super buy into like. You know, all like all of Triple H's guys are gonna be put up to the sure, top and everything sure, that's sure. everyone that's not his NXT guy mm-hmm. is not gonna be is right, gonna go to right. the wayside. I don't believe that necessarily, but I do believe his guys are gonna get brought up yeah. they deserve to. I mean Kevin Owens, I don't know if you knew this, he hasn't had he hasn't held a single championship in over five years. Didn't he he said that in the promo? Yeah, right? I think yeah. he may have mentioned that. I saw it on social media, but I think he did actually mention it. It's like that's not that's criminal. Yeah. Kevin Owens is genuinely like one of the best talents in WWE, and, and he just doesn't get treated like it. That's what I think has been the biggest problem: is you're making the titles. The titles should be held up on a pedestal, but they shouldn't be unreachable. Right. And having them on Roman and Brock for however many years, mm-hmm. they've just been unreachable because they've just been put on this god status. Yeah. Where like mm-hmm. a Kevin Owens or a Sami Zayn or a whoever can just just can't reach it. Right. So at that point, right. it's like. What are they f- wrestling for? What are they, what what are they fighting yeah. for? What's the point? Yeah, So totally. now hopefully it's like these like guys who are maybe n- before were on like C, unfortunately on like a C or a B list here. Yep. Like let's get Kevin Owens back in the title picture. Yeah, let's get Seth percent. Rollins way more back into the yeah. picture. No, you know? I, I agree. Yeah, I, I think we're starting to see a few guys, you know, getting pushes and stuff. Guys getting more TV time. Like Ricochet mm-hmm. is getting more TV time. Um, like Champa obviously is getting a yeah. little bit of a push there. And also like one thing that's notable, I think we talked about this on the previous podcast, but like how important he's making the mid card titles feel. Like the, yes. the presentation for the Intercontinental United States Championship, they've had like the promo packages where it's like talking about the history of it, the legends mm-hmm. that held it. You've had banger, like Bobby Lashley fought Champa, which was great. They yeah, had they the did. whole tournament, not tournament, but like the matches. They to did the find build the up and the Harley Race tribute. The Harley Race tribute. Know? AJ Styles, Bobby Lashley, which we, we can talk about was. Mm-hmm first time ever match i don't even think they fought in tna i think uh-huh. they weren't even in there like maybe they were in there at the same time for a little bit but like bang over match like this is the stuff that fans want to see fresh mm-hmm. matchups for championships that you know should be you know it's important a championship should be important yeah, you know what i mean whether it's the main championship or not mm-hmm. it's like so it's just like it used to be like a it gives them a re- reason to fight like for. just like hand like hot potato it was just yeah. handing out so it had no importance but like you actually give it meaning and you give someone like a meaningful reign like mm-hmm. people will start to care about it and yeah. i think people are actually going to start to care like because bobby lashley is a 
top guy in WWE mm -hmm. and he's holding a mid card belt. He can elevate that, and then the next guy, and it continues the cycle. And Intercontinental, too. Gunther Shinsuke had a fucking mm -hmm. amazing match on SmackDown. It was the main event, too. So that was my biggest point with that, with the U.S. title match uh, this past Monday on Raw. Bobby defeated AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. And like you, uh, not to reiterate your same exact point, but that was the biggest thing I noticed is, like, it wasn't the main event of the night. Right. It was uh, Theory versus Ziggler, which mm -hmm. we can talk about. But from the beginning of the eight o'clock start time up until it, it they kept on going back to it and hyping it up mm -hmm. and even like finding something that, that like arguably isn't a big deal. But if they harp on it with the whole like first time ever, whatever, like find the story, find the big deal. And then like they hyped it up to the point where when it happened, it was like, you know, you, you were invested in it and right. you're like, okay, I, you know, I'm ready for this. I can't wait to see it. And yep. it like, and then they like they just haven't done that, like you said, for the mid card title in yep. years. Yeah, hundred percent. And then now they now they're doing it, and like you said, especially since you know Roman's locked up with both the titles, mm -hmm. it's it's more important now than ever to make a big deal out of the IC belt and the US belt because now that's like it's arguably the only belt in the show. Because I remember this was like twenty sixteen ish that when they did the whole brand split thing. And Brock, when he was like the universal champ and the belt mm -hmm. wasn't around, like the intercontinental belt, like the Miz would like, that was like the yeah. number one belt on the show kind of because it's like I'm here and stuff like that. So it's like I'm the main guy. This is the top belt here because the other guy isn't here. Yeah. So it's like they made it feel important. So it's a matter of like the storyline behind it and also giving it to someone that can make the belt feel important. And like mm -hmm. Bobby Lashley is doing that and Gunther, I know he's new on the scene, but like oh, he's, he's great. as legit as it comes. So like he's like just banger matches like we have i've seen more 15 20 minute matches on these shows the yeah. last two weeks than i have in the last few years there was some there was some statistic where it was like it was like either this week or last week it might have been last last monday but it was like this is the first time monday night raw has had a 20 minute match in however many years yeah. or whatever you and know it's like i don't know why like that would have been such a issue before i mean to vince mcmahon it's because like take too much time and he doesn't care about the wrestling as much as the the sports entertainment or the story or whatever but it's like people want to watch like quality wrestling yeah. why do you think AEW is doing well because they have quality wrestling matches um another thing we can go to touching on the same subject but mm -hmm. it was uh the miz and champa defeated mustafa ali and cedric alexander and when's the last cedric alexander specifically when's the last time you saw cedric alexander really get to show up show off yeah. and like put on a good a good match with other talented people you know i think yeah. that that match is a prime example of like here are some guys that haven't really gotten their their TV shot. Time and Mustafa stuff like Ali, that. Cedric Alexander, mm -hmm. and even Champa. Um and here, have a match. Because yeah. you guys are good wrestlers. Yeah, that's the thing. It's <laughs> like, like they're great wrestlers that were just like back in catering, that were just yep. in the back and you know, didn't have any direction, whatever. And it's just cool because like I don't know if that's gonna continue to be a thing, but Ali uh, Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander, that could be a cool tag team. Sure. You can put throw another tag team in there. They have history with the cruiserweight, uh the cruiserweight championship and stuff. I think they had a little rivalry. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, there's history there. It's just nice seeing fresh faces on yeah. shows and stuff like that. It, it really is. Speaking of fresh faces, we had Dolph Ziggler in the main event. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um Theory defeated Ziggler in the main event. Um this was one I wasn't I'm I'm not I'm I'm like notably not a theory fan. Mm -hmm. I just think he's like should boring. I get it. I get he's a new guy. I just don't I don't think he has it. Should this have been the main event? No, I think the US title Absolutely. should have been the main yeah. event. But like I understand like the whole like theory building him up, mm -hmm. putting him in the main event scene. You want eyes on him and stuff. And Dolph Ziggler, I mean, this is I think this is the first time they had the one on one match and they've kind of been teasing it for a mm -hmm. little bit. Dolph Ziggler is, is like when you talk about bringing a new guy in and you want to make him look good. Dolph Ziggler is the first guy you go to. Yeah, because I don't think anyone sold. Because I'm not. I like the idea of what they're doing with theory. Mm -hmm. I do think there's a lot to work on there, but I do think he has something. I don't think he has it now, but I think he has something that he, he's just like, I know it's just the basic comparison, but he's like a young John Cena. Like he just has the look and everything yeah. like that. I think the whole selfie gimmick, I don't like. I don't like his his finisher. He puts them on the, his shoulders and then like drops them on his knee. 
doesn't it just doesn't really look good for a lot of people but like Dolph sold it phenomenally like that but that's one of the only guys that can make it look good they have to tweak a few things Mm -hmm. um and I do believe he's going to hold on to this for like almost a year because there's no way he cashes in anytime soon he still has the money in the bank there's no shot they give him the world title anytime soon um that's what I was like which you were kind of alluding to with giving him Ziggler is like Ziggler uh Ziggler can help him Ziggler can help elevate him, like you said, putting it, it puts him in a match with a veteran. I think Ziggler's a good choice for now, regardless of the match quality. Mm-hmm. Ziggler was a good choice because I'm not ready to see Theory pin someone like a Seth Rollins right, or a Kevin right, Owens right. or whatever. 100%. So like, 100%. Like, someone that has credibility but like can eat losses yes, like that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I think Ziggler was, is maybe not the perfect opponent, but a, a, a definitely ideal as good one as it, for now. As good as it gets for now. Yeah, so I, I like the idea of the slow build. You know, a little different too, but like Seth Rollins when he won the Money in the Bank, mm-hmm. obviously he was a bigger name and stuff like that. But like they built up the whole cash in for nine, eight, nine months or something like that. I want to see that with Theory. Just yeah. like just take it slow and then have it like whether it's unexpected or like later on. Like I like the whole idea of Cody Rhodes winning it and then Theory cashes in on Cody and it kind of mm. spoils the whole Cody finally winning the big one. And yeah. then they do that because um, that would be way down the line. Um, but I don't know. I I I I, I kind of like what they're doing with him, but there's still more to be seen. Yeah, I'm definitely in a position where like I'm more on board now than I was solely because like now I just have more faith in creative. Sure. So sure. It's like, yeah, all right, think, let's just yeah, see. Think about that yeah. too. Like I think he's in he's in better hands now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you do you have any other notes on WWE Monday Night Raw? Um, or whatever? Just I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into that. Yeah. No quality show. They had pay per view worthy matches like the like Drew Kevin Owens could have been on a pay per view. Yeah. Uh, Bobby AJ most definitely could have been on a pay per view. And Theory and Dolph I thought was going to be on a pay per view. I thought it was going to be like a SummerSlam match. Mm-hmm. So like we're getting great quality matches on a regular Monday Night show, which is what we see also on. AEW Dynamite. Right, so great transition. Mm -hmm. That is one of the biggest points I had. So I think this is a a nice segue topic is how, and it's been said, we've talked about before, but especially now, I think it's most uh, more prevalent than ever is how TV shows are at this point arguably either more important, Mm -hmm. probably to them because TV show ratings are huge, um, them being the companies. Uh, show quality wise, the weekly shows are pay per view qualities now, yeah. which mm-hmm. is great. And WWE is finally catching up to AW because AW has been doing that. Can I say one last thing about Go Raw? Ahead. Go that ahead. One thing I'd like to see them do, and I I actually think there's a good chance of this happening compared to when Vince was in charge. Mm-hmm. Put Raw back to two hours. Yeah, three hours is too long because I just yeah. think sometimes you can drag it on. I know now it's going to be a little better because I think Triple H will find you know the time to fill in the this time and yep. stuff. But three hours is exhausting, dude. dude. It's so it's, it's yeah. long, like eight to ten, bro. That time frame is perfect because you can yep. go fast paced. Mm-hmm. You can fit things in there. You can make it more interesting and yeah. also like. You, you cut the extra hours so people aren't going to get TV time. But let's say, okay, one week, these guys, which is what Dynamite does. Suspense for the next show. So it's like, this guy might be on one week, might not be on the next right. week. But it's like, okay, where's that guy? Oh, he'll be back next week. So you'll be more right. invested. Yeah, That's no, my I agree. one little thing that I, I want them to I change. I don't see them ever doing it. Okay. <laughs> but, I think, but I think that's they, a perfect solution. It, It'll be great. Yeah. It would you're, be great. you're right. That's yeah. the thing. You're right. <laughs> but it's like... <laughs> I have more faith in Triple H doing it than, yeah. than Vince McMahon doing same, it. Same, same. But all right. Let's get into... To one of the best AEW Dynamite shows, if not ever. the best, if not the best, AEW Dynamite, the House of the Dragon, oh. Game of Thrones thing, special, <sighs> Jesus Christ, from the what from the very show. beginning, I, bro. Genuinely, I can't remember. Well, I'm sure we'll go through piece by piece, whatever. Mm-hmm. But let's just talk about it as a whole now. Um, I can't remember like the last time. It was probably an AEW show where like I was just sitting there watching it. And I'm like, I'm alone, mm-hmm. and I'm like sitting there, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you know? yeah, like, like you're you're, you're sitting up, and you're like, it. and you're yep. like, let's fucking go, yep. you know, just like when 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 so CM Punk came in, did 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 his promo, started calling out Moxley, and when Moxley's fucking music hit, and you're mm-hmm. like, oh shit, we're like we're getting a confrontation, yeah, big time, like. When's the last time? And you know, granted, I know, I know, it's it's tough to. I don't want to shit on WWE just for the sake of it at this point because, like, we do have to give them time with Triple H to kind of right. get back in the swing of things. But 
and it is kind of a beat, beating a dead horse, whatever. Because of the tri- the, the Vince, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, wh- I don't remember the last time in WWE where I've like sat up, other than maybe the Brock and Roman match sure. recently, because it was like, an exciting really match. Invested in it, but solely because of the story mm-hmm. and solely because of like, oh fuck, what's gonna happen? Oh, this is the star power and whatever. I'm not doing that because of some crazy bulldozer right, you know, thing. Right, I'm right. doing it because like, holy shit, we get to see these guys talk. Yeah, that's you know, percent. when's the last time that's happened in two WWE? Of, two of the best in the world. Yeah, just going back and forth and, and holy like, shit, and obviously not holding good. back either. Oh my god, like some of the good. lines they were dropping. Like, I mean, CM Punk comes out right away, talks about how he's the champ, how he's been gone for a while, calls out Hangman Adam Page. I didn't really get that. I'm sure. That, I don't know. I'm that. sure. I, they definitely could have left that out. That was I weird. think that kind of made Adam Page look a little. Yeah, because then he didn't, he didn't come, come out. out. They could have left that out maybe that's just a future thing maybe adam page comes in and like like uh costs punk the match or something i don't know maybe maybe it's for a future thing but just him going at moxley and just making jokes about like him saying like oh i touch you you're gonna start to bleed and stuff and saying like you're the third best member of your own group and it's like what was it you're the fuck you're the uh you're the second. Oh no, man! This is when he was talking about. Was he talking? He's talking about Eddie King. He was at one talking point. about. Yeah. Oh no, he said he goes. You're the third best member of your own group. But that's something that's becoming. Uh, you know, it's a pattern. He goes the second best Kingston I've been in the ring with. Talking about Kofi. Right, and then and the third said, best and, Eddie, and then the third best Eddie. Which yes. Eddie Gar- who's the second Eddie? Eddie Guerrero. I, I was thinking think of that it. too. Eddie, that Eddie Guerrero, and Eddie. <sighs> I, I don't think know. Of it. I, I have no think of it. clue. I don't even know him and Eddie Guerrero were in the ring together because he was Eddie yeah. Guerrero died in 05 and he wasn't even in WWE yet. I, I don't know, I don't know. but I Maybe. believe him. I believe, him. and then he goes like, "You won't even be the first John that I'll be in Chicago." Yeah, or something. I'm like, "Oh yeah. my god!" He's like, and, and he goes, "You're definitely not number one on the talent there." Oh too. my god, it was bars. It I want actual bars. I want to get back to all the positives of the prom, but I want okay. I want to get something out of the way first. Get it out of the way. It's something that we kind of talked about off camera before the pod. Um, the criticism of. Oh, this is just two WWE guys. Yes. Uh, look at uh-huh. look at AW just using WWE guys to sell tickets and whatever. And then the criticism of which you mentioned again off pod where you were saying how many WWE lines there were. Yeah. So I want to talk about mm-hmm. that. And my two cents is shut the fuck up mm-hmm. because there's no brand loyalty. There's no whatever. Sure. It's just wrestling. Sure. And all the wrist, the wrestling history mm-hmm. is WWE and WWF. Exactly. And since wrestling mm-hmm. is so built on nostalgia and history and sto- long storytelling, you have to just go. You, it's not even going back to WWE. It's just going back to history, and it so happened to take place in the sure. WWE. Hundred percent. So that criticism, I don't get and at all. There's two points I want to make off of that. Please. One, two, one. Excuse me. The first point I'm going to say. I'm going to start with my second point. So I'm going to start with two, <laughs> then go back to one. No. So my first point is. It's very different between taking shots at a company yep. and taking shots at the person who was in that company. Right. They weren't taking shots at WWE. Hundred percent. They were taking shots at each other for what they were doing in WWE. Yeah. Like with the whole. And again, just using the third history. best group. He didn't mention the Shield. He didn't right. mention WWE because obviously Dean Ambrose, like before WWE, he was on the indie scene, whatever. Mm-hmm. But like he's made a name for himself from WWE. Yeah. So of course you're going to bring up his history. Yeah. In WWE. If this, if that all happened in New Japan. It'd be the same It'd thing. It'd be the same exact but it's thing. Just, and people wouldn't yeah. bat an eye about it. And two, it's not like it would be a little different if it was like a non WWE guy taking jabs at WWE guys, like former WWE guys, sure. like maybe like an MJF CM Punk thing. Because MJF did drop the WWE bomb mm-hmm. a few times. But these guys were both in WWE. Right. Like these guys were CM Punk, again, indie guy, was, you know, built a name for himself before. But both these guys are most known for their time in WWE. Mm-hmm. They're two former WWE guys going at each other. It's yeah. not like it's this ex New Japan guy taking shots at WWE because mm-hmm. he was in WWE. It's completely different yeah. this time around. It really, really is. And it's like it, it, they're not they're bars bro like they're actually shitting on each other it's, it's like, talking about um it's like any other sport too where it's like it's like the bucks signed tom brady mm-hmm. but fans aren't being like ah oh, the buccaneers are just using tom brady to get to, to, to get advertisement no they're using tom brady so they can win the fucking yeah super exactly bowl. it's like and guess br- what they won the super bowl yeah. with tom brady <laughs> that's a very good analogy you know what it i is. mean no, so it it's is. like of course they're gonna sign cm punk and john Moxley. yeah i mean yes not exactly. not, not because oh we gotta bring WWE guys it's because 
oh, let's sign the greatest talent in the They're world. They're free agents, and we can sign them. Well, yeah. And they're going to bring eyes to the product. That's the goal. That's but then the you also point. have... It's not like they're. They also have a Jungle Boy segment mm-hmm. before that. Yeah, exactly. The main event was fucking Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks mm-hmm. with Dragon Lee and uh, 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 Roosh. And, yeah. oh, I'm uh, leaving out Andrade. Andrade probably, yeah, Lee, yeah, but, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like exactly. Fucking, yeah, they're not. The show about? isn't revolved around former WWE right. guys. Like there are times when like they'll be a big part of the show because they're big time wrestlers. Yeah, and it's also too like john moxley he's john moxley he's not dean ambrose this is a right, whole right, different right, character and right. everything so it's i understand like i i i sort of understand when it can go a little too far when you're just taking senseless sure. jabs at the company for the sake of it but this is not the case there is a point where like where like it's and it's happened before where you're like okay we get it we like, get it let's yeah, move sure, on from sure. the wwe stuff but there's so much here and like there's you said so the jabs were worth it Yes, yeah, and, and there's shit. history between the two. They had a rivalry in WWE. Mm-hmm. Like I think one of CM Punk's last rivalries was with was with the Shield. Mm-hmm. So it's like they have a history already. And it's like then Dean was like, "Let's be honest. Like you you came back here because you needed money and stuff." Like like oh my god, I like, was that's fucking sick. My favorite <laughs> fucking part was like they just started like getting like into each other's mm-hmm. head and like the foreheads, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Moxley steps back, he gets back into his face and gives a little kiss on the mouth. <laughs> Gives him a little kiss, <laughs> and then he shoves his face. Gives him a little kiss, and he shoves him. So holy so, shit! It was an insane opening segment. I fucking I love loved John every sec- Dude, he's awesome. He's. Uh, I don't want to say he's the best wrestler in the world, but I mean, God, he makes such a good case for it. Dude. He's at minimum, I would say, probably. He's top five. I mean, at like minimum, the fucking swagger. He has the best swag. He has, dude. He has so much confidence. He has the edginess. He has the the, oh the character, God. the 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 crowd control, bro. Yeah. Everyone, whether he's a, I don't even know. Like, is he a good guy or a bad guy? No one knows. No one but knows. the fans fucking love him no because he's just he's off the rails. He does his own thing. Mm-hmm. The ble- like he's hardcore. And he's like, amazing. I think they did the brawl. It went on a little too long, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Mm-hmm. But they did it well. Where like, we're like. They'd be going at each other and they'd break apart. And Moxley, because, you know, just kind of his character where he's like, you know, the very cool, calm, and collected, mm-hmm. and then he fucking explodes. Right. He'd like get some space and walk around and then casually walk and then find the opening. Yeah. And, you uh-huh, know what I mean? And they're uh-huh. both like being strategic about yeah, it. Yeah. I just think they they did that whole thing well. Um, and then it happened again, which this is, I loved. Uh, I think I tweeted at this at Raspy Taylor at Dante on deck uh, <laughs> about. I was like, oh shit, they're doing it again because that showed and kind of goes back to like the US title thing mm-hmm. we were talking about, just building up something, right. talking right. about it throughout the show where all of a sudden Moxley's not fucking done. Mm-hmm. He comes back out in the middle of the show yep. and he's like, punk, I'm not fucking finished. And they continue the thing. Yeah, you know, they continue brawling. Like, that's I like huge. looked up and I was like, wait, where he's back? I was right. like, where did he come from? And you know what's fucking, I, 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 what's fucking crazy is it got announced. We're getting that match next, next week, week on right dynamite right I, holy shit i i was i was very shocked to hear and that all out is coming because up. they were talking they actually said this on the announce booth because they were saying like let's do it tonight and the announcers are like why wouldn't they do it tonight and they were yeah. like well you know money millions of dollars uh-huh. the pay-per-view blah blah and they're like yeah that's true <laughs> so i'm very because i don't like if they do that okay so they unify the belts. Let's just say that we get a winner. I think uh-huh. there'll be something that happens. Same. I same. think because I do think this is. There's no way they wouldn't put it on all like, out. All right. Let's say, let's say Moxley wins. Whatever. What's going to be the match at all out? Right. Right. You know, because they they don't have much. Isn't time all to out in like up. two weeks? Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> the day after Clash at the Castle, which is the third. So it's yeah, it's that uh, two weeks, two three weeks, whatever it is. Um. So it's like they really don't have much of a build up there. Uh-huh. So I am. I'm interested. Maybe maybe that's when Adam Page comes out, and maybe they do like a triple threat thing. So or one maybe of them, that's a, so he eats the pin or something like that. Maybe they hit the, the sixty know. minute time limit. They could maybe do that, that could be. Know? That's a good point too. Yeah, yeah. As I much as I don't want to see them keep going to that well, but like, like I, I don't want to see them drag it on. But I don't think just getting this one match and doing that would drag it on because when yeah. Danielson came and Brian Danielson came to AEW. Him and Omega started the feud for the title. They mm. had the sixty minute time limit. It and then they had another match. It didn't drag on. Like it yeah. was just like two amazing wrestlers fought till the end, and mm-hmm. there was no winner. Like all right, at all out, no time limit. Put a stipulation mm-hmm. there, whatever. Um, I think there's going to be something that happens next yeah. week. I can't. Obviously, big money match. They want eyes on the the product on the TV show, yeah. but 
I can't it's gonna be imagine. Huge, dude. I can't imagine they actually unify the belts next week. I yeah, I'd be shocked. I'd, I would I, be shocked. That would, it's just I don't know. Like it would be cool, but it would be confusing. Yeah, It'd be confusing. Um, before we keep getting deeper into dynamite, just uh, I saw I, I saw a tweet about this, mm-hmm. and I just thought it was an interesting take. Um, this seemed like maybe AEW's response to the good WWE shows. Tony Khan said Maybe. in an interview, he goes, he's competitive. He, he says, he goes, I watched the product and he goes, it has been a lot better. I than saw it that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's very open about that stuff, which I, which I respect. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, listen, AEW, obviously when they started off, they had to light a fire underneath them and they had to have some, you know, banger shows and like make a name for themselves. And over mm-hmm. time, you know, people started to trust them and it's like, okay, like we know how good you are. Now WWE's picking it back up again. AEW's like, okay, they're picking it up. Now it's we got to pick it up, and too. And they fucking, like, they and, just... Oh, they did it. Tony Khan shit. tweeted Six before the show, year. like, this could, like, this is going to be one of the best shows. Dude. And he was right. He was absolutely right. It's an amazing and they to did be a it. wrestling fan. One of the biggest criticisms AEW gets is, like, you know, oh, like, their best moments are when someone... Oh, uh, well, never mind. Kenny Omega did return. But, Never like, that was, was built up for a long it time. It was built too, up, so. and it was known. But, like, at least, like, you know, the John Moxley and CM Punk stuff and, like, the Gun Club stuff, Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson and Garcia, like, that was all just based on that. Right. You 100%. know, there was no, like, surprise. There was yeah, no whatever. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I mean, WWE, that's what they've been doing the last few weeks, carrying cross return. That yeah. was a big return. Uh, Hit Row on SmackDown, and they the returned. Dexter. Dexter, is yeah. he's making his little appearances. The one time he, like, I like what jump. they're doing with that. I do, because I that's his character. He's a yeah. fucking psycho. I, like I think that. that's going to be, like, just quickly going back to sure. WWE, because it seems like... AJ Styles is the theme here. Mm-hmm. I think that's what the feud's going to be. He's like trying to like stalk AJ for whatever reason. I don't know much about him. I'm going to be He's, curious. So in see. NXT, he was just like the, a really creepy character, yeah. like just stalkish type of thing. Um, he was with like Gargano in theory in NXT. They had a group called they oh, were he's the that? way. He's been in NXT. He was. What? He's, yeah, he was in really? NXT with them, and he he's married to this uh, this uh, female wrestler in NXT called Indy, Indy Hartwell, I believe mm-hmm. her name is. Um, and they actually continued down on NXT. I know you don't really watch NXT, but they mm-hmm. planted... She opened a letter, a love letter, and it was like his thing. So like Ooh. they're like they're like throwing little things here and there. Yeah. Like he's coming back. Um, but yeah, so it's, I'm, it, I don't know what they're doing with that, but I like it. It's just subtle little things. Like he came out, they tackled him, and they cut to commercial right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay. Yeah, they're like, treating they're, it like it's like, like it's a legit thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's cool. Um, but yeah, okay. I think Back we have to, two big talking points before we get into the after party. Okay. Um, Brian Danielson defeats Daniel Garcia in an insane two out of three, three falls match. Let's talk about the match, and we'll talk about the the aftermath with it um holy shit i am a big fan of daniel garcia i Same. think this kid Same. can have a very 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 bright future Same. i think he is capable of being a good guy as we'll talk about in the aftermath obviously being a bad guy being in the jericho oh, appreciate fuck society you. 23, 23, 23 years old three years old. i'm fuck older than you him, bro are you out of your mind you had the holy you had shit. an amazing tweet last night here is uh <laughs> here's uh danny randy or in legend killer or in garcia or whatever it was and he's he's this he's the second coming of the fucking legend because it's not like the character work bro he's an amazing wrestler yeah like to go to go toe-to-toe with brian danielson who even on commentaries chris jericho was like one of the best technical wrestlers of all time if not the best which right. is the truth arguably one of the best wrestlers in the world today to go toe-to-toe with him he beat him two weeks ago made him pass out first fall like that yeah. for danielson like obviously i remember when he came to aw he was talking about wanting to put younger talent over yep. that's exactly what he's doing and he made him look fucking good he choked him out that finish that submission that he put him in i was like yeah oh my god <laughs> i was like i'm thinking i was like oh like they're gonna have him pass out to this i think i put danielson pass out that move looked I was fucking shocked he dangerous. Out. He was like, the way he was bent and he had his arm in, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I'm about to pass out <laughs> watching this right now. And so, and then Danielson, obviously, he mm-hmm. ended up winning the match and stuff, which makes sense. But they both they both were bloody at the end. so I good. Like, I like that, you know, I, another criticism AEW gets is like, especially Moxley, is the 
the uh, blood, excessive blood. I th- I thought this was tasteful. They it, neither of them were dripping. Neither yeah, it was just a like blood spot. Right. If it, if it like you can make it work, you don't have to be excessive with it. You right. can throw it in there and be like, oh, he's bleeding. But I'm like, oh my god, right. he's bleeding. It was you know it I was mean? subtle enough to be like, oh holy shit, they're beating the shit out of right. each other. But it's and not they like were grotesque. And they were, dude. Like just mm. like there was one point like before the match ended, there was just like a minute, two minutes where they were just on the floor like trying to get submissions on each yeah. other, just hitting each other. I'm like, that's and they kept they kept going back and forth doing like the head stop yep. thing garcia was like taking his moves right kind of like uh, oh like I'm, i can do what you do and shit like i and also a little like easter eggs like the submission moves he was doing he like renamed like the move like the the dragon slayer or something like that because mm. it was the move that he used to beat uh danielson so it's like they were throwing little yeah. things and they're calling him the dragon slayer and shit oh my God. i I really like the direction they're going down. And the direction that I hope they're going down is after the match. Mm-hmm. Brian Danielson won. Uh, I believe it was Brian Danielson clapped. He's he's sat in the I loved that visual. He was like sat trying to get up and stuff like yep. that. He was like stuck out, out his hand. The- Garcia struggled to, to, to get up before. Uh, we don't know if he was going to shake his hand, but before we could see that, mm-hmm. Jericho comes, beats up Brian Danielson. Garcia Gets Jericho off him. Jericho's, you don't know what you just mm-hmm. did. And, I mean, and props to Jericho, too. Jericho is just a fucking... He, just, he can just turn it fucking on. Yeah, like, for he sure. wants to be a mad... Like, that look in his eye, like... Oh, yeah, he was guy's pissed. a world-class like actor. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. He's been doing it for a long time. Oh, my God. He's, He's doing it what, for a What a class time. act. But... And then we just got kind of like a, 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 a tease... Mm-hmm. And then, oh, fucking the crowd chanting. I, okay, so I'm very happy you said that. When they start, you're a wrestler. So I shit. was like, yes. So good. Yes, I loved that so much because it's because obviously Jericho Appreciation Society, yeah. the sports entertainment thing. and What all, an amazing detail. And the combat club is the professional wrestlers. Oh my God. You're a wrestler. I loved that <sighs> chant so much. And then, like, obviously Jericho left. Danielson got up, like, what the fuck? And then. Garcia walked yep. out, so it's like they didn't like do the whole handshake thing. I think they're gonna build up to that. So um, that's that's the next the week. In the next week, Jericho's like, I like me and you in the ring. Like, yeah. I need you to know what side you're on. And that's that's the tease. Daniel Garcia in the Blackpool Combat Club. We said we fit, called it. We bro. did call. We did call on the record. This. MB. Oh shit, my headphones <laughs> fell off. On the record, MBW called it early. Daniel Garcia to Blackpool Combat. Club. He just has the look. Like he has the fit. Like he'd fit right into that group. And it's exactly what, because they're start because right now it's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Yuda's the only young guy. Because Cesaro's new, but he's not young. But yeah, exactly. So you have the three veterans. So it's, yeah, yeah the, so it's Moxley, Danielson, Cesaro, Claudio, and mm-hmm. then Yuda. And those are the three, right. so those are the right. three veterans with the help of the veteran manager, William Regal. Right. So you have the infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Now, and it's, and, and it's at this point, I... I want to see them do a little bit more group stuff, maybe like get Cesaro or sorry, Claudio more involved, but regardless, it's established mm-hmm. in terms of legitimacy. Now it's the perfect time to be okay. Now we can bring the younger guys in this group. Cause that's right. what the whole thing was. Yeah. They, they were talking about like when they were forming it, it's like, we can right. like train these young guys and right. like bring them along with us and stuff. And they started with Yuda. They Which got, they got start, Yuda. Yuda's start. got the. I don't, is he still the ROH? I Whatever so. champion. I think yeah. So, yeah. So, got Yuda. Daniel Garcia is the next one. Like, mm-hmm. That's fucking good. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, that's a great start. And then you got, like, the five man group because they've done, like, the blood and guts and stuff, but they added, like, other wrestlers in there. Yeah. Now you have your solid five that you can use for matches like yep. that. Or, like, how? I mean, you can do trios stuff, like, trios yeah. tag. Now they have the belts, just normal tag team yeah. stuff, like, uh, Claudio's the RRH champ and stuff like they're I think stopping at five for now maybe going to six I think, is good yeah because they brought you in a few months ago maybe you can bring Garcia in wait a few more months yeah. build up someone else and even like, since Claudio line. is still new to like, that's it's true still, you know? yeah that's true yeah but yeah no that's uh, uh, exciting I love I love how and even to which we didn't touch upon this but something that kind of happened a little bit more last week is how Right now, it seems like Daniel Garcia and Ricky Starks are mm. being pushed like fucking star. Like they're like As these they are should. the stars. As they these should. are the new stars, and exactly. Mm-hmm. And again, you know, MBW called it. <laughs> MBW, we, we we we've been we, saying we've the called, Ricky Starks. Put, we've called a few things. Yeah, I've called a few things. One or two things. News. We we're cursed because news always happens when we release yes, the pod. I can however, imagine what's going to happen after this. However, we're calling stuff. So we can, maybe we have our magic crystal ball that we can see into the future of professional wrestling. We're cursed, but we're magic. So let's say, you know what? 
let's say something. Let's put out. So we we got the Ricky Starks on our side. Mm -hmm. We got. Oh, let me just finish the point I was making. I guess. <laughs> um, uh, um, yeah, it seems like right now Ricky Starks and Daniel Garcia are these two super young guys that they're fucking pushing, and it's great to see. I I love to see, and they feel like stars. Right. And it's, after it's the really match last night, see, Garcia, yeah. just seeing the reception from the crowd and stuff, mm -hmm. he definitely felt like a star. Uh huh. What can we look into our magic ball right now? Because uh, you know, obviously, we're predict if, we, if 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 what we say happens, if we have this magic, right? What can we say? That's yeah. You know what we called it. I don't. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I mean, there. I mean, I don't know. I'm I, saying. I think, oh. Oh. What do we got? I'm thinking. I'm trying to it think of something with the too. AEW World Championship. Like I, I want to think of like a big shocker that's going to happen. I'm saying maybe like MJF returns or something like that, and like maybe he caught or like CM Punk wins and MJF comes out and like confronts mm. Punk or something, continues that feud or something. I'm thinking either not that he's one of the young guys, but I'm thinking Eddie Kingston gets close to the title mm. or because um, he's been put on the back burner for a little bit right. again because Ricky Starks right. and Garcia, but Darby Allen. Darby Allen. Darby Allen had been someone that's been skyrocketed that's and all true. of a sudden has been cooled off. And he hasn't had, you know, he was the TNT champ a mm -hmm. while ago, but hasn't touched a championship in a while either. Hmm. There's a lot. There's a lot of different. That's the thing about AEW. There's so many different guys in there that they can just come up, just throw into different storylines, mm -hmm. and then just like, you know, see where it goes. Well, let's move on to the final, what I think is a uh, topic before. I mean, we'll get into wrestler of the week, but, and, uh, and, and match of the week, but. Kenny Omega returns and personally <laughs> I'm, what I'm so sorry I Go just ahead. thought about what, what what my prediction Go ahead, was say it. and I actually thought about this last night you asked that I'm like I definitely thought about this I want the acclaimed oh. to be tag team champions oh. so so oh. so Bad. I skipped I, over it because, like, in in re relation to the rest of the show, it was like it was a small point, part of the but show. But I fucking love dude. The Ma I think Max Carter is his name. Caster. The guy, that, or, Max uh, Caster, Max Caster that that does the rapping and stuff. I was on YouTube yesterday and I just looked up like like entrances and stuff like that. And there's this one YouTube channel that has like 20 parts of him. Oh, I've like, watched. I watched those too. <laughs> Fuck it, this dude is great. comedy, dude. He's, He's so good. Got bars. It is so so funny. And Anthony Bowens too. He's he was fucking yeah, great too. and like uh, he was out for a while, so they uh -huh. kind of like went to the whole gun thing. They were doing the ass gun, whatever it was. The whole scissor me dad that thing is hilarious. Beautiful. Billy Gunn's like scissor me. I was seeing it. tweets that was like only in wrestling because like obviously we we'll, we can go over it real quick. Gun Club turned on Billy Gunn, mm -hmm. and then the acclaim came in and saved the day. And only in wrestling can you get like a genuinely heartfelt moment of a guy named daddy ass <laughs> and Anthony Bowens. They're doing like the scissor thing with their hands yeah. and how emotionally driven that People was when, it. when, when he yelled scissor me daddy <laughs> and how emotional, like, you know, that was so emotional. Yeah. yeah it's so funny. And I love beautiful. it. I love it. But my prediction is that they will be future tag team champions. Hopefully in the near future. Yeah. I think they've been around for a little bit now give them their time they're awesome Agreed. they're awesome especially with like maybe like the bucks being tied in the trios like you know right some, some, yeah there's, there's room in the tag division i think he could drop some bars on swerve and keith lee like yeah. some like wwe line yeah i think they could do well there okay but last match of the night the young bucks with the returning kenny omega uh to advance in the trios tag team tournament they defeated andrade roosh and dragon lee but the, i mean the story here regardless of the match Kenny, Kenny fucking, Omega fucking Omega is back. Mm -hmm. Didn't look 100%. I, I don't know if that's just maybe like a story they're I telling think or they, whatever. I feel like they kind of played into yeah. it a little bit. Because I, I think he tweeted or something. He was just like, I wasn't at my best, but I'll get better and yeah. stuff. He, listen, they're not. he's not wrestling if he's not 100%. He's definitely 100%. I just think they're kind of doing the build-up where it's like as each match of the tournament goes on, he looks better and better, yeah. and they win the belts, and it's like Kenny Omega is actually mm -hmm. fucking back. Talk to me about the presentation of it because i think i love the way they did it mm -hmm. they were they were so obvious with it with with the bucks teasing it last week and the bucks maybe i think that it was a being the elite thing where they mm. put out uh one of them doing the phone call right and it was basically we were basically told it's gonna be kenny omega mm -hmm. and i i appreciate that because like 
they they do a lot of the surprises but at this point it was so obvious and they were like let's just give the people what they want mm. and they gave justin roberts the card to read yes and the second he started reading it and did his whole like from you know he's traveled through north carolina yeah. and like just yep. just the build up to it and it got i think with not doing the surprise you got the you got to really prolong yeah. the moment mm-hmm. of like so it's it's as if instead of him returning within that snap second he got to return for like five or ten minutes sure. and he got to sit in that yep. and re- the audience really got to like holy shit holy shit we're getting them and you know yeah um uh, yeah what's what's your take on that i think it was great it's very similar to when cm punk debuted because it's like kind of like the worst yeah. kept secret you knew he was going to come back like cm punk in this case it was in chicago uh-huh. rumors going around he signed no one was saying anything but like they were teasing big return whatever and it was cm punk here, Kenny Omega, they built it up for a few weeks. Like obviously, Adam Cole turning on them. You know, can't he's not their partner. Adam uh, Adam Page, he's not going to be their partner. It's like okay, they're running out of options. There's only one guy left, Kenny Omega. And plus, like you, I remember when AEW was just starting and they were talking about trios. Like those three are the ones because they were. I think on ROH they were uh, trio champs. Like they were the ones that pushed for that. So it's like it makes sense that those three were the ones that. Were the team to you know be put together, um, but no, I mean even though I could see them losing in the tournament. Really, I, I don't. I don't know who they could lose to though. Like I mean, I, I, I did, I did the House of Black is the only other team I think that mm-hmm. could possibly win it. But I do think they'll win. But regardless, I think just the Billicks. It's like you knew it was going to be him, but it was like yeah. it was prolonged. So it's like again, so they came out with like their manager and it's, the announcer was like, "Is it him? Like mm-hmm. is he resting?" Obviously, like no, it's not going to be him. They waited a few mm-hmm. seconds. The match might begin, and they're like, "Oh." Here's this note in that, and moment, it was like a minute, two minute long thing. He felt like the biggest God. fucking star. Yeah. He felt bigger than Roman Reigns. Yeah. I'll say it. The I'll presentation, say it. yeah, the presentation and the the fanfare around it. He was made to feel in that moment. I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying he is. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying the how the moment felt. He felt like the biggest star in the world. I mean, let's be honest with you. He really kind of is when it comes to professional wrestling i mean he yep. is like he, he i would I, argue roman's a, actually a bigger star i think all right so but I'm, in terms of presentation star versus presentation like wrestling ability like kenny omega probably oh, is agreed. the best wrestler in agreed. the world but like so it's like they were saying like hasn't wrestled in 270 <laughs> days it's like when you haven't seen arguably the best wrestler in the world for that oh long people are gonna be fucking Hyped and it was I, crazy. I, just the anticipation of it because you're waiting for Justin Roberts to finish the promo. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you knew, like you knew it was going to be him. Like uh-huh. obviously they were. He was saying things that you say for any Kenny Omega intro, but it's like, oh my god, it's him, it's him, it's him. They were showing the signs, and mm-hmm. then he finally says Kenny Omega. It was. He was awesome. back to his classic look too. Like it they was, changed the trunks. He got rid of like the crazy facial yeah, hair. Uh-huh. Like, you know, it was it was Kenny freaking Omega. It was like a couple weeks ago we were talking about how like. Dynamite had a little bit of a run where like the shows were the shows were great, but they weren't they're missing something because they had so many injuries, right? But right. within the same show or the same couple of weeks, we got Punk back, we got Kenny Omega back. Adam Cole, even though he didn't like he's not cleared, he was on TV. They did the whole split and stuff. Oh like right, right, that right, with uh, the Young Bucks mm-hmm. and stuff. So it's like we're. It seems like uh, I, I'm sure there's still a couple more people injured. I'm not sure sure who's still injured, yeah. but um, Danielson too. He was injured for a little. Oh yeah, bit, and, Bre- and then he so, came back. Boom, like. Yeah. They're, that's what you're missing. You're they're missing fucking your back in, yeah. in full mm-hmm. gear. Mm-hmm. No yeah. pun intended. It's a good thing that, and good. It's a good thing and a bad thing that it all happened at once because yeah. it's like you have that period where it's like okay, like we have to work without them. But when they all come back, it's like that. May, like the last few weeks of Dynamite have been great because yeah. of those people coming back. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, what a show. I think that brings us to our tail end. Um, I mean, we can run through. We only got to get, get, get an explanation. We can go into the after party, but real quick, match of the week, wrestler of the week. I got you go right now. Hit wrestler me. of the week, Daniel Garcia. Huge. I know he lost, but like just the presentation, he looked fantastic. Looked as legit as legit could be mm-hmm. going toe to toe with Daniel uh, Brian Danielson. Excuse me. Match of the week, uh, Daniel Garcia versus Brian Danielson. They tore the fucking house down. Mm-hmm. Loved the presentation of it. Both of them looked amazing. Neither of them looked weak. Even though Garcia lost, he didn't look weak. Brian looked strong. Garcia looked strong. Very excited to see what they do with that going forward. I think I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think we have the same match of the week. I mean, match of the week easily. 
absolutely is that. And all, we didn't really talk about the match much, but like the Kenny Omega, but that, that trio it was, was good. Was it was a good match. It was a it was banger. a long because they they came. I think they started at like nine thirty, nine thirty five. Yeah. So like it it went on for a while, which is good. I'm happy trios is getting some love. Um, I could have put. There's, there's an argument for Mox and Punk, especially Mox, in my sure. opinion, because he was just so, 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 so good. But, I mean, come on. Give it to the kid. Gotta. Give gotta it to the, it. Gotta give it to him. Give it to the legend killer killer. All right. Oh, that was it. That the was lights, the show. The lights are coming off. The lights Ooh. are going down. The the music's coming up. I feel good about that episode. That I was feel, an episode. That was a great episode. Are episode you, 10. Episode 10. They always you, say episode 10's always the best episode. Until the 11th until one. Until the 11th one, exactly. You know, we got now we got the after party, Woo! which you can check out, and I always forget to plug it at the beginning of the show. Um, <laughs> for $5 a month, Lumberland.com slash Patreon, you can get a bunch of exclusive content from Lumberland as well as our MBW pod after party. It's basically we go for another 25 to 30 minutes. It's very podcast and fan base. We answer questions. We discuss things that you uh, you guys leave in the comments of the Patreon. So head over there, leave your comments in the Patreon post. Um, really appreciate it. Subscribe. You can follow get that, me. Get that last small. Oh too, yeah, get please. that last small. As we just can we so we can just say that we sold out. Please, just please buy it for if you a have friend, a kid. a kid. You grow into it. Even if it's for your baby, it'll grow into your it. Dog, your dog, dog, decent sized dog. Cut, 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 oh, or cut off the sleeves, turn it into a tank top. You can fit yeah. into that. Crop top, crop top, crop top guys. Sorry. Summer's still here. Summer ain't over yet. You can follow me at Raspy Taylor. You can follow me at Dentator Eleven Dante on Deck. I have a few different handles, but just look me up. I'm, <laughs> you gotta I'm, fix I'm, that. You gotta, you gotta get your make it all fixed. consistent. You gotta, you gotta yeah, consistent. I'll, I'll get there. I'll, I'll fix that at some <laughs> point. Just look up Dante Tour and I'll come up. That's true. Um, I was surprised you had me. You said that like I like, did that when like last time you said that, and I was like, oh shit, it does all come up? Yeah, so yeah, it does come up. So just look me up. I'm everywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> Add thank, me on LinkedIn if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you in the next episode, but more importantly, in the after party. See you there. Yes, sir.